I would like to talk a bit about data science in, in e-commerce. So we have seen many applications during these talks. And I would like to give you an example of, of how data science is actually used in, uh, in e-commerce and give five, five or four or five, six applic real applications without giving all the details. And one application, which is a bit more research, for which I will give some details, the package used, and some details which can be useful. So I work for Cidiscount, which is an e-commerce site, which you can compare to Amazon in France. And first of all, I would like to, to talk about what I'm going to talk. So basically, I would like to tell you why you should not, you should, you should not leave this talk. And our data science is really a big game changer for Cdiscount. It's sometimes difficult to convince a non-technological um, enterprise firm that data, data science is really important. So I would like to tell you that it is really important and you need to insist uh, to convince that you can really change everything with that. And since it's a Python um, conference, I would like to say why we chose Python and why Python is still Python and always Python, and why Python really suits our needs in terms of recruiting, in terms of de development, in terms of production. And then I would like to give an application with some details, something a bit more research, uh, which is quite nice as well, because you've got three, four machine learning techniques and uh, three, four Python packages which are used and uh, it can give really nice exam example. So I've, I've got 25 minutes. If you want to interrupt with question, questions are welcome. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can ask questions at the end or after that. So this is the homepage of Cdiscount in, Cdiscount in this moment. So we are celebrating 20 years of, uh, of existence. And this is a special offer you can find on your own page. You see everything is blue, everything is new, really nice. So we've got 20 years of experience, and uh, it's really a big, big site. So why you should listen to this talk? So we're talking about data science. Uh, the first thing about data science is data. So do we have this data? Do, can we really build model on this data? The answer is yes, because We've got millions of customers. We've got millions of visitors, so customers and not customers, every day. We generate tons of clicks, and we would like to predict the behavior of these visitors. For the customers, we would like to anticipate what a customer would do in the next, but we would like to know the customers as well, so understand if a particular customer is in a given category or not. And we've got a really big catalog. Who says catalog, says images, descriptions. So we're talking about NLP problems, image recognition problems, uh, sites problems, because 30 million of products is, is pricing problems, because the price always change. So for all this data, we've got tons of people. We've got more than 30 data scientists. We've got more than 30 uh, ITs and engineers that are working exclusively on data. So. And we've got a variety as well. Variety means that among the data scientists, you, there is no data scientist. The, the data, data scientist's job is difficult to, to identify. Uh, these people have got different backgrounds. Uh, data scientists, master courses, of course, but they are mathematician, computer scientist, statistician. Uh, for me, I'm a mathematician coming from a completely different sector, I come from finance and I've got a PhD in mathematics. So um, I've got colleagues who are more computer science oriented, and our colleagues that will come from insurance, statistics, academics. So it's a really big variety. And on the IT side, we've got um, SQL um, administrator, we've got uh, Hadoop administrator, we've got different kind of um, databases, different kind of philosophy. So it's, it's this variety which really um, sums up data science, which, which really is, fits the data science, because you need to tackle the problems from different angles and a different technique, and brainstorms uh, really gives the idea that everybody's got an opinion and a different angle to tackle the issue. So we were saying that data science is everywhere. 
So you might not see it, but it is actually really everywhere from the moment you start. So imagine you're looking for a product and then you search for a refrigerator or on a TV or a computer, whatever. So when you, when you type something on the Google search bar, you will find many results. But these results are not homogeneous in, in the sense that they come from different um, corners of Google. So on the first line, you would see images. These images are not for free. You can see uh, Boulanger, Leclerc, Darty. You can see different brands which fight to have the first spot in the first line of Google and to push the images. So this is called Google Shopping and it's part of a more broad strategy which is called SEA, which it's commercial advertising. So you pay to be in the first position, <laughs> but you need to guarantee not only that you pay, you need to guarantee a certain quality of your advertising. And then you've got the natural research, the, the, the free research, which is which we call SEO, everybody calls SEO. So in this case, it's Google that decides who's the best and puts your results in the first, the second, on the third, on the first line, or in the second page. It depends on the quality of your, of your um, SEO um, score. So both, in both these cases, we've got fully automated Python's optimization. An example of the SCA for which I work, we've got a complete automatic um, campaign construction. So a campaign is basically um, the unit of the of um, the unit which groups several products, several search query. So you, you can make a campaign on computers. You can do a campaigns of a typical of a of a type of a, a phone. And then you have to bid for each query. You have to bid on how much you want to pay for the search query to show on Google. And this is all fully automatic, both creation and animation bidding, and it's done in Python. And the same holds for SEO. Uh, you've got tons of optimizations without, which are done in Python, and that works every day. But not only. So imagine you are a CDiscount, CDiscount customer, and you're used to uh, go on a search engine and look for something. When you look for something, it's, it, it is not trivial to give the user the best user experience. And it is not really easy to match what the user wants and what the, I say, the standard search engine would give you. So without that science, you would find for broad uh, search query something weird. So for TV, you could find TV series, you could find an USB key, or you can sign, find something which is, has been seen on the TV. So the research might not be pertinent. So you want to optimize this research and actually have TV when you search for TV. And this is the case uh, at the moment. And you can see on the, on the right side that you can find Samsung televisions uh, uh, with really nice images. So the user experience has been optimized to exactly find what you want. And this is done, once again, completely in Python. So the journey continues, you choose for something, and when you choose for something, you're, you, don't, you do not want to buy it completely blindly. So you want to compare. Sometimes you compare to other website, but most of the time you compare within the website. So you look for a TV, you've got a really nice one, which costs a little bit too much or a little bit too less for your budget, and you can compare it to some, some similar products. So you might want an upgrade or downgrade according to your needs. So we give you the opportunity to choose among similar products. And once again, this is fully automatic, and this is done in Python. But when you come back, you always forget the milk so, or the bread. So you don't, we do not want you to forget anything. And in case you buy a TV, you might not have the cable yet. Or in case you buy a telephone, you might need an extra charger, an USB. So when you buy something, we give you the opportunity to choose among complementary products. 
So the goal is to have a win-win experience and to, to, to complete your basket. So you can, in this case, you can see a television, which is complete by cables and, um, and things to hold the, the, the TV on the wall. So these are, these are just four examples of things that, are, that have been done in Python, but data science is really everywhere in CityScope. So it goes from the, we talk, uh, before we talk about the catalog, so there is a big data scientist, t data scientist team which works on the catalog, guarantees that there are no duplication of products, that the description are well, um, that the description are okay, then uh, that fills the description when you've got nothing to in a description. The catalogs comes from many, many vendors, so you cannot always um, guarantee that the vendors fills all the blanks. Uh, you've got something in finance, you've got data science in supply chain, so credit scoring is when you, when you apply for, for a credit and you have, we have to tell you if you are eligible for the credit or not. So it's, this is a typical insurance-like problem. And, uh, and as you can see, it, it, it really it justifies the big, the big teams that we have. So why Python? So it might sound uh, trivial to you, uh, logic, uh, we are a Python conference, but it's actually not. I come from finance, and in finance, uh, at least for, for the moment when I was working, Python was not really used except for prototyping. So there are some exceptions and some edge funds, but um, most of the time Python is just for prototyping. Because once you have to go to the, to the real market, you, s you want two things. You want mm, the C++ speed, or C Sharp, or Java, <coughs> I don't know. And you want to translate a prototype into something, uh, into something different. So many people choose to have a two-stage prototyping first, and then uh, production with a translation in the middle, with a middleman that takes your code and transforms it to something else. Some people like it, some people do not. In our, in our case, uh, Python allows many things, but mostly Python allows to reduce the need of the middleman. So e-commerce is really fast, things change really quickly, and you need to produce algorithms in production really quickly. So if you want to shorter, shorten your time to market, Python is a really good choice because the data scientist becomes the center and is responsible from the beginning to the end. So mm, there is no translation uh, and there is a sense of responsibility towards your code, so there is no excuse. You've got a framework, which might have been coding for someone else, but your algorithm is really the center, and it goes from, you take a prototype, you clean the code, you test the code, uh, but then you have got something uh, which is usable really, really fast. And Python is transparent, is robust, and, and I would say it, it's simpler to learn with respect to other languages. It's much simpler to learn than C++, and this is, and nevertheless, it is really, really powerful, really general purpose. So why, why this is important? Uh, something which is simple and easy to learn is nice to have. But as we said before, we got multiple backgrounds. So we cannot ensure that everybody has the same strong backgrounds. And since you need many skills to, to be a data scientist, you cannot be a top C++ programmer, a top mathematician, a top statistician, and no deep learning and no everything. So Python suits the need. It allows to recruit widely among the community because you can learn it fast and there is a good chance that you learned before you become a data scientist. So, and so I find it particularly elegant and uh, it really suits our needs. There is a strong community. If you got the problem, you go on Stack Overflow, you find an answer really quickly. You've got tons of libraries, which are 
ready to use, which is not the case most of the time for, for other languages. And you've got Jupyter Notebook, which is a really game change. If you want to show something really quick, you've got the Jupyter Notebook, you, you do your graph, you send, really, really nice. And you've got uh, libraries, as we said before, machine learning libraries, and, and you always have the state of the art. If there, is a, if there is an algorithm that comes out, in really short time you would find a, a one version on, on Python and it's really nice to use uh, immediately. So that's why we chose Python. And that's why I like Python as a, as, as a language. So I've got 10 minutes left. We will go through an LP clustering algorithm application. So this is, this is an internship subject for a nowadays colleague of mine on, um, on SEA, so the, the team for which I'm working. So as we said before, you, you might want a new refrigerator. And you, in this case, you don't want to pay it so much, so you're looking for an expensive refrigerator or cheap refrigerator. I know in English it's frigo pas cher in French. And you've got many results. You've got, um, before we had just SEO and Google Shopping, so the images and, uh, and the free results. But you also have another one, which is called, which is issued from Google, a Google text, Google search. And where you've got um, a textual announcement, a textual ads. So this time you've got no image, but you can give the message that you want associated to a given search query, and of course you pay for it. So we, we're going to talk about uh, Google, Google search. And so how much do you pay for it? This is Google that decides who pays what, but you can give uh, a maximum amount of money that you would like to pay for a certain search query associating to a certain redirection with a certain message. So everything is coupled. And uh, how does it work? So um, for example, you look for something which is not necessarily a word. It might be a phrase. And you say, I want to pay 50 cents for each click for this announcement. So Google says, OK, there's you, there's Amazon, there are other, other people in, uh, in the auction. And he says, everybody wants to pay something, but everybody gives a certain quality, a certain user experience. So Google takes these two information, combine them together, rank the actors, and says, OK, you are the first, you're the second, you're the third, you're the fourth. And you, the fourth, uh, didn't pay enough, so we won't show you. We've got just three places for this particular query. Um, just the three of you will go in this, in this order. So this is the Google perspective. So for us, we have to say, how much do we want to pay for this click? And this might seem a trivial question. It is actually not, because you need to know for a given user, given query, a given moment, how much you expect from this query in terms of returns. So, OK, Let, let's take the, the history with this query and we talk about it. Uh, we've got a problem. Most of the keywords have no signal at all. They exist in a brief moment, the first time the people click on the keyword and then they exist no more. So if you look for something really specific, it might be that in one year of history, you can have just one click or zero click. So how much do you pay for a keyword you know nothing about? You can see on the graph on the left side, uh, you can see on the graph on the left side that most of the keywords <coughs> fall in this category. So more than 80% of the keywords have no signal at all. You know nothing about it. You would say, let's do not bid on them. And you have massive loss. So these keywords are really important. It's like a dark entity. They are really important. You need to bid on this, but you know nothing about it. So what you do, you take a keyword. See, it's quite rare. Let's find something which is not rare that looks like. In which term? Not in behavioral term, but in semantic way. So you can change the brand 
or you can change the color. So assume that someone looks for an iPhone which is uh, pink. I don't know if iPhone sells in pink, but <coughs> it might it might have a signal which is um, which is not as good as the iPhone the white iPhone or the classic iPhone. So you group these keywords together, and you and you make just one big keyword, uh, and you can bid on this on this cluster all together. As you can see an example, so we put together a telephone, a black telephone and a white telephone because we did not have signal enough and we, we create just one bit. So you always need a slide with some math and the idea is to project the keywords in an embedding space or in a Euclidean space. So you've got something textual, but you've got tons of techniques to convert it to something uh, numerics, but then you have to reduce the dimension. So in order to do the dimen to reduce the dimension, we use the word to work algorithms, which is a, a really common one, and which allows to capture semantics. Uh, so capture semantics means that is th the word to work algorithm is, is able to, to relate king and queen, men and women, and, um, and create couplings among <laughs> keywords which have got similar opposite meaning so it's really able to capture the semantics of the keywords. And this allows to project something sexual in a space which has got, uh, let's say, 100, uh, 100 dimensions. So it's a big space, but it's a Euclidean space. So in the Euclidean space, you've got a distance, you've got multiple distance, and you can use the distance of the Euclidean space to, um, to pull back the distance on the, on, uh, on the keyword and obtain a distance on them, which you can use to cluster. So coupling the slide with some math, there is a slide with some code. As in, in scikit-learn, uh, the interface is rather simple. Uh, it's not identical, but you just, you just need to train the model and then, and then use the predict function to, to create the embedding. So, and what did we use? Uh, I use this, this example because it managed to uh, present four packages which I used, three or four more packages that I use in Python which are really useful and allow us to shorten the time to market. To, to market. So we use scikit-learn for a TF IDF um, for, for, um, for optimizing clustering. We use scikit-learn as well to produce clustering. You can use K-means clustering, you, you can use hierarchical clustering, uh, both are pretty fast and you manage to uh, create this um, group of keywords which got the same semantic meaning. We use Jensen version of the word to work to, to, for the word to work embedding. And you can use a stammer, for example, an LTK, um, which is a common problem, at least in French. Uh, you do not want an asha to form different categories would create noise. Uh, word to vec itself is able to understand the semantics, but the stammer allows to clean up a bit of the, the, the problem. And this is how cluster look like. This is a, <coughs> let's say, microscope on, on clustering. We've got, we've got many, 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 many keywords. And you can see that clustering actually allows to separate the model of the telephone. So as I said, it's a microscope. You can, you can see a typical telephone with different models. So you've got S4, the G5, and you've got different clusters for different models. But you, which is remarkable is that you also have the general cluster. So when you do not have the model of the telephone, the algorithm allow, uh, managed to put this typical these keywords into a generic into a generic group and so you, a generic group is is interesting because it is typically a group where people would look for something but rarely buy to so just looking around seeing the price these are not really profitable cases because that you would pay for the click but you will not have a, a transformation, a conversion. <coughs> and to finish, 
you, this is a static image, but it, it is actually dynamic in, 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 the original, uh, in the original contest. You can see the clustering on a plotly, uh, on a plotly. So um, each bubble represents the signal. So bigger bubbles are bigger keywords, like Samsung, many people's, and smaller bubbles are rare keywords. And you can find th and, and you can see thanks to TS and E representation, uh, all this 100 space in a two-dimensional space, which contracts uh, the dimension but respects the sine distance. So you've got a really nice representation, uh, and this is possible in really short time thanks to all the package we mentioned. So I'd like to thank you for the attention. If you've got any question, I'm, I'll be glad to answer. So the question is, is if there is a problem of speed with all the amount of data that we have. The answer is, of course, yes. So you need to, um, you've got, so, so we train the, the model, the work to model, we train on a catalog. And as I said before, we've got millions of products. So the, the description are really, uh, there are many, many, many descriptions. So it takes some time. But um, you, you can add make, once once you fit the model, in a, it's you can use it as long as you want. WorkTrack is rather robust. If you've got a problems on speed, you can split. In fact, in fact the, the 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 keywords are thematic. It's quite easy to identify the, the theme, so or telephones or computers, and you can split quite easily the catalog into the telephone catalog, the the. Um, the computer's catalog. So you can say this is a workaround, but you can split and you can divide and conquer, and you can create multiple work to vec models for each theme, making it much faster, and um, it would still continue to work. Work to vec is, has the ability to be really robust and give really nice results in, uh, in quite, quite a long time, but not so long. Uh, I, I don't know. So, the, um, so the question is about uh, uh, pre-processing uh, techniques, and uh, if we use uh, lemmatization or stemmatization. So, I, I actually in, I did not do this work directly. So, we chose it is the person who did the work who chose uh, this approach. Uh, I actually I do not know if this part is uh, particularly necessary. One, one really important part of word to vec is, it, one example is that word to vec is able to recognize stop words. Most of the time, if you put stop words in the word to vec models, you've got no difference at all. So we did not try explicitly, but I'm assuming that stem, to stem or to make pre-processing in a text is not really that game changing. So I cannot answer it directly the question, but I could say you may also try not to have anything at all as pre-processing. And it would be nice, actually, if, if you had nothing at all. But thank you for the question. No more questions? OK, thanks. Thank you.